Alex, you needed your big players to step up on in the match midweek. Um, the job's not finished. Obviously, you've got a tough game against Birmingham. It'll be another physical test. Yeah, listen, every game's a tough game. You know, irrespective of whether you've won, lost or drawn the last match, the next one's the biggest game. So, Birmingham, I think, have been in good form this season. You know, I think they've certainly made progress than where they've been the last sort of few years. I think they've added really good dynamic legs into their team, young players that have got hunger. Um, and I think you can see that in the performances. So, we know it's going to be a tough match. But equally, I think that we're more than capable of beating any team in the division on our day. And we just need to make sure we try and approach the game tomorrow with a belief and a confidence and, and make sure we try and make the moments that, that are going to happen count in our favour. The incentive is that if you win that game, you'll go above them. But you just can't predict the table at the moment, can you? No, but I think we just need to add points. You know, It really is as simple as that. Get as far up the table as we can and then we can turn their attentions once I think we get it's a, it's a different season actually this year because of the World Cup you know it's not really something we've ever experienced here in terms of that layoff for that short period and then you're back into it um, so I think the way the table's shaping up at the moment really until you get the other side of January I'm not sure it's entirely going to settle you know so we need to make sure that we keep up with the pack shall we say by making sure we try and add wins and get as many points as we can between now and then and then obviously take stock in terms of what our ambitions are for the remainder of the season and go and try and get after it. It was a much better performance against Wigan. What what did you see as the main positives that you've taken out of that vi that victory? Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I wouldn't say it was a much better performance. I think what happens is when you win, people attach that next to it. Um, I thought our performances in the last games were better in, in certain aspects. But I thought what we did have was there was a grittiness about us. You know, I thought we were determined. I didn't think we were as free flowing as what we had been in previous games, but that probably helped us in terms of being defensively solid because we didn't get caught ahead of the ball if we gave the ball away as often. Um, and it's trying to get that balance between being a team that was on the ascendancy and wanting to attack um, and obviously being defensively solid at the same time. So I thought in the game it, it became a game of who was going to hurt who more and thankfully when we got our moment we took it and, and that was basically the difference in the game. One or two of the previous matches it's looked as though there hasn't been the player who'd put the foot in, take take one for the team. Um, Jordan Thompson came in and, and did did a really good job. You know where I'm going with this. There's three or four players, I think three players that are one card away from uh, losing. You're losing them for a match, but yeah, I think that shouldn't affect things, should it? It's not even a talking point, as far as we are concerned. But it's interesting you said that because that's something that I've raised with the players that were too nice in those moments, those transitional moments. Sometimes you need to take one for the team. You know what I mean? If you need to bring somebody down, you need to stop and attack. And Jordan Thompson did exactly that. Um, and strangely, I ended up praising them for getting a booking because it was a promising attack for them. They breached their line, they get wrong side. And on the pitch as a player, you get, you smell the moment in terms of you understand how threatening it is to your goal. And Jordan made the decision to stop the game. And that's something I don't think we do often enough. You know, so albeit I don't want my players booked, but there is sometimes you need to take a calculated sort of risk shall we say and stop the match because if not it could be the difference between you conceding the goal or not so yeah um not surprised you spotted that inch that's very kind of you um you've got a quick turnaround in matches now be before the break will that affect you in your team selection for the next match uh yeah i think it has to at this point because i think that three games in the bounce is quite normal in the championship and even by the third game you can always see players starting to sort of uh, taper off a little bit but certainly four and five games is not normal at any level in quick succession where you're going two or three days two or three days two or three days and it's not necessarily just the physical sort of strain and toll that it takes in the players it's the mental toll in terms of them getting themselves up for the game how much it means being really motivated showing their best qualities so yeah I think in these moments utilising the squad and, and obviously the squad being fit and available becomes very important at that point. And what you tend to find is in long, hard seasons, the guys that have got the biggest and best squad are the guys that last the sort of time, if you like, because when they need to change it, they're bringing in good quality players that can still make the difference without weakening the starting eleven, or the fact that they've run out of legs because they've, they're spent in terms of what they've done in the previous matches. So, yeah, that's something. That, my job's the most difficult. I've got to have um, the foresight to see it coming. Whereas what happens is people watch it happen and say, oh, you should have changed it. And if I knew that, I would have changed it before the game. So I've got to make sure I try and preempt it. I look at where I think we're fatiguing. I look at specific positions in terms of how much ground we've covered. 
and try and make the best educated decisions as to what we need in the game. When you obviously look at stats as well, but is there ever a point where you think I'm going to trust the players' judgment, or is it now completely based on stats? Uh, both, both. I think there's specific players. One one example is Jagielka. Do you know what I mean? He knows his body. He knows what he can and can't do, and. I've had that sort of discussion with him today, really just making sure that he needs to be honest with me that he's if he's ready and he's not ready. And if he's not, there's no there's no harm in that. I don't mean the, to, to expect him to churn out all the games is extremely difficult. Um, but if he feels he can he can certainly do the next one, then we'll take a view after that. Do you know what I mean? And that's basically how it works. But the data does come into it. It does come into it, but it's certainly not. It's only part of um, the information that you have a job when you're making any decision. And talking about the players that, that came back, you had Nick Powell, Josh Tymon. Are they OK after the, the, the rigours of the game? I know Josh went off, but you said he was OK after. Yeah, I, th I think Jordan Thompson had just been back, having just sort of been out for a little spell. Nick Powell hasn't played a lot of minutes, been back. Josh Tymon, even Harry Clark, you know, Jacob Brown. Jacob Brown was out for six weeks and he's now done two back-to-back. -back. So all the lads, um, they're all OK. Um, but as you say... Naturally, the games sort of take their toll to a certain extent. So that's something we've been evaluating um, in terms of what the team should look like for tomorrow. And Harry Suter's started coming through, more, getting more minutes. Is there a chance that he might be um, in your plans even to be on the bench before the end of the this particular set of games? There's always a chance, Ange. Yeah, I didn't think I'd get very far with that one. What about Gavin Kilkenny? How's he doing? Gavin... Um, he he yeah he's made good progress he's on the grass at the moment um, but he won't be quite ready for tomorrow. And Ty's got a, an illness. Uh, yeah, Ty had glandular fever, so right. so that takes its toll. Yeah, it can do. Yeah. Talking about Jagielka, who's who's been really good, his contract I think is up in January. Have you thought of talking to him about extending that? No, I, I think with Jags, it's, it's, it's basically just a conversation day on day, week on week in terms of how he's feeling, how he's doing, things like that. So, um, But that's not something that we need to really concern ourselves with at the moment. You know, the simple fact is if Jags is doing as well as he's doing just now and he wants to continue to play, then we'll, we'll be able to sit down and get something sorted. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a big issue. He must be a, a great role model for everybody that comes through the doors at this football club. Yeah, but I think the fact is that he's playing at that age and putting the performances in. Um, and when you watch a lot of the stuff back, the do the goals we do concede, he's got very very little fingerprints on them. You know, he's um, yeah, he defends very well. I thought he had a great block at the weekend. They put a long ball up. I think Foxy misses it, and he gets back with a recovering tackle. Um, he's nimble across the ground in those moments when he when he smells the danger that's coming towards those goals. So yeah, he he's performed very well. Um, so we hope that continues. And when you came into the club, you talked about there were certain areas where we didn't have players. Yeah. In, in t have you thought now with a view to whether you use the transfer window in January because it's always a difficult window and people pay more money. Have you thought there were any areas of the team you could strengthen if the situation arose? I think there's always areas you can strengthen your team. I mean, there'll never be a window where anybody will go, yeah, we don't need anybody. I mean, that's never ever going to be the case. There's always something you'd like to add. There's always something you'd like to bring into the squad. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a replacement for what you've got. Sometimes it's variation to what you've got. You know, because as a coach, what you want is as much variation and choice as you can so you can opt to play a certain different type of ways. The, the simple fact is, when you're putting any sort of team together, you're restricted by the type of player that you have. Do you know what I mean? So if you don't have, like for instance, we're short on like wide players, aren't we? You know, we spoke about it at length. You know, Tariq Fosu, when we played a 4-3-3, really is only out and out winger that we've properly got. Um, other players can play out there, but I wouldn't describe them as a winger. Do you know what I mean? You'd probably describe them as maybe a forward or an inside forward playing on the flank. Um, so yeah, probably more variation, shall we say, in terms of adding different types um, rather than sort of out for out replacements. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, he touched on Birmingham, of course, and then the uh, momentum with him at this moment in time, I and mean, they do have legs in midfield. Is that an area that you consciously looking at in terms of the way they sort of hold the ball and then move very, very quickly and turn it 
defensively you attack very, very quickly in the midfield area? Yeah, transitional, they're very aggressive. I mean, they've got good runners in there, but equally so have we. So mobility-wise isn't something I'm overly concerned about um, in terms of the game itself, but it is a threat from them. I think they're second best in the league for pace towards goal, which means when you get the ball, how quickly you move up the pitch. So what it shows you is they're not a pattern-based team in terms of they're going to just keep filtering the ball across the back. They'll move it quickly and they'll go and attack your goal at pace as quick as they can. Um, and they've got some really good players that do that. So we, we know all the dynamics and understand all the areas where they're going to be a danger against us and we'll do our be best to guard against it and obviously try and imprint our style on them. There's a good mix of experience and I suppose youth in the level which you've just touched on isn't it really which is helping. I mean you've got players like Troy Dooney, like you've got Jaggy Elker in this side, they really can for a lot don't they? I think in my opinion the best thing that they've done, obviously the, the new coaches went in who's, who's done well, um, but I think their recruitment's been excellent. I mean that's the biggest difference that I've seen in Birmingham in the last five, six seasons because I think before you knew what type of Birmingham team you were facing. I think this team is much more dynamic than any of the teams that I've seen previously in the last five, six seasons. You know, they had the pace on one side, centre back with Sanderson, pace on the other with Trusty, Chong and Hannibal in the middle with pace, the young kid Elemenu from West Ham, legs, John Ruddy and goals with a bit of experience, Bielik in the middle can control the ball. Yeah, they've got good options in the squad and they look as if they've been pieced together with an idea and a strategy about how they want to play, so fair play to them. You go into the game with momentum off the back of a, a good win, and it yeah. was a good win, three points. And you go into that, and as I say, the game's coming very quickly. You want to build before we hit the break now, don't you? Yeah, we want to win the next games. I mean, because I've got an appreciation of how well Birmingham have recruited and some of the good players they've got, it doesn't have any impact on my thoughts and my team. We on our day, if we play well, can still beat Birmingham, no problem. Do you know what I mean? But it'll be a tough match. They've got good players, they're set up well. It'll be, a, it'll be a tough game, do I mean? But a lot of games in the Championship are for different reasons. Um, but obviously, I've watched Birmingham for a number of years, played against them for a number of years, and I've seen more marked improvements from them this time round than I have before. You've touched on the atmosphere many, many times about what the crowd can do for you, but they're bringing a full house as well, so it should be a terrific atmosphere, shouldn't it? Yeah, great. You know that's what it's about, isn't it? You know we want to obviously take as many away fans as we can to away grounds. You want to play in good atmospheres. You want to play with expectation. Um, Let's make sure we win. Cheers, Ali. Thank you. Uh, you talked about Jordan Thompson and uh, that important tackle in, uh, against Wigan. And his stats, as you say, are, are excellent. And it's great to have him on the pitch. All the supporters seem to like him and everything like this. But sometimes you're sort of thinking, well, he's not scoring the goals. He's not sort of like saving them or something like this. But it, as I say, it's always great to have him on the pitch. What do you think is, is, is his main characteristic? You know, uh, what makes him so good? And, you know, what major contribution does he give to the, to the squad? Um, J Jordan's, for me, since I've come in the building, I can't, I can't speak previously. Do I mean, I know he's played a variety of different roles, but for me, Jordan takes instruction extremely well. He understands the game. I think he's extremely industrious. He gets up to the ball. I think he's got a really good left foot. He puts in good set plays. And I think that um, he's tenacious and he gives you a snap and a bite in the middle. And like that... Um, that foul, you don't actually know how important that foul actually was. It might not have been important at all, but it might have been the difference between winning and losing the game. And that's where players' understanding of the game comes in and it's, and it's important. And obviously Jordan felt the need at that stage to stop the match. I would tend to agree with him. And I think that what you'll get with Jordan is, week in, week out, you know exactly what you're going to get from him. He won't let you down in that respect. So they type of players as a coach, great to have because you know, you know exactly what he's going to give you every game.